All right, welcome to a quick video on Gauss-Jordan elimination. Uh, the thing about Gauss-Jordan elimination is that it's really just a shorthand way of solving a linear system of equations. And uh, because of that, what I'm going to do is when I'm working through this problem, I'm going to simultaneously work through uh, simplifying a system of linear equations uh, at the same time. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my first step when doing these problems is just to go ahead and rewrite the original matrix. So I'll rewrite my A down here. A is 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, 2, negative 4, 0, negative 4, negative 3, 6, 1, and 7. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make that an augmented matrix. And the reason I'm going to do that is so I'll have a corresponding linear system. So I'll rewrite these numbers. The bar represents an equal sign. Now, what am I missing? I'm missing some variables here. So I'll go ahead and stick those in. Let's just assume that they're x, y, and z. And a couple of pluses. All right. So there is my original matrix, and now I'm going to use gauss jordan elimination, and I'll start with the very first step, which uh, I'll scroll back so it's back, still on the screen here. So I'm going to take the topmost row without an existing pivot in the leftmost cell. So uh, what does that mean? That really just means I'm going to take the top left cell and circle it. And the very first pivot is always the easiest right there. Oh, excuse me. So I'll circle the pivot here. Uh, the only time that you would not start by circling the upper left pivot, uh, I'll draw, write that example really quickly here, is if you had a column of zeros to start it out. All right, and then who cares what's to the right of that. If you start with a column of zeros or if you have multiple columns of zeros, then your pivot is going to be the top of the first non-zero column. Uh, that's kind of rare that you start with these zero columns, but it does uh, appear in some applications, so just keep that in mind. All right, well, let's go back to our current example here. So I've created my new pivot position. Like so. The next step is going to be to use row operations to change the value inside the pivot position of 1. Uh, well, that's not very interesting because I already have a 1 inside of my pivot position. So let's go ahead to the third step. I'm going to add or subtract multiples of the active pivot row to zero out above and below the pivot position. So that's the key here. All right, so now that I'm using row operations, the first thing to remember is that these are not equal matrices, these are equivalent matrices. So the symbol that I use for this process is this little tilde here, the squiggle. And it says that I'm going to change some numbers so it's not equal to the original A, but it is equivalent to the original matrix A. And the goal is, I'm going to take my pivot here, that one inside of my circle, and my goal is to zero out the numbers below it. The 2 and the negative 3 should be zeroed out. And uh, what does that mean? Well, it means I'm going to need to subtract a 2 and add a 3, because I'm adding or subtracting multiples of the active pivot row. OK, so let's go ahead and rewrite the rest of the matrix now. I've got negative 2, negative 1, negative 3 on the top row, and then I'll rewrite these numbers. Okay, and uh, I can't just change that first column. I have to take every column. Here I took positive 1, multiplied by negative 2. So I'm going to take negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 
6. All right, and then I'll repeat that for the next row. I have a positive 3 here. So I took positive 1 times 3 is positive 3. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify these things. Now, technically this is equal because I'm simplifying, but just to play it safe, I'm going to go ahead and write the squiggle every time. So I'm going to get zeros below the pivot. And here I get negative 2, 0, and 0. Negative 1, 2, and negative 3. Sorry, 1 minus negative 3 is negative 2. And then finally, negative 3, negative 4 plus 6 is 2. 7 minus 9 is negative 2. And let me go ahead and mark my pivots. Uh, sorry, my, I only have one pivot. I got ahead of myself there a little bit. I'll mark that next pivot here in just a second. But let's go ahead and compare with the linear system that this came from. So, the linear system that I had had x minus 2y minus z is equal to negative 3. Now, notice that this equation is exactly the same as the equation if I multiply by, say, this negative 2. That's negative 2x plus 4y plus 2z is equal to 6. It's also the same as 3x minus 6y minus 3z is equal to negative 9. I can turn this into both of those equations there. So what I do is I take the other two equations, 2x minus 4y is equal to negative 4, and negative 3x plus 6y plus z is equal to 7, and I add the left-hand side and right-hand side of each of these to the second and the third equations. So what do I get here? I get 2x minus 2x, which cancels, negative 4y plus 4y, which cancels, z, nothing plus the 2z, and then negative 4 plus the 6, and then on the next row I got negative 3x plus 3x, which cancels, 6y minus 6y, which cancels, z minus 3z, and then uh, 7 minus the 9, and then all of that does simplify. The top one will just stay the same as it was originally. The next one becomes 0, 0, positive 2z is equal to negative 4 plus 6 is 2. Z, nothing, nothing, uh, negative 2z is equal to negative 2. Of course, notice that that's exactly the same as the matrix that we got over here. It was also a big, humongous mess uh, to do all that with all the variables mixed in there. And that's why we like uh, row reduction. Um, it just kind of simplifies the process, even though it really is just solving a linear system of equations. All right, now that I've completed these steps, step four says at the end of every uh, zeroing process, we're going to repeat all the steps until every row is a pivot row or a zero row. And we notice that uh, the second row is not all zeros. It doesn't have a pivot, so we have to keep going. So we'll go ahead and back to step one. Create a new pivot position in the topmost row without an existing pivot, the leftmost cell containing or above a non-zero term. So what does that mean? So what, here's what I do. All right, I've take this pivot that we've got here. And it's the topmost row that doesn't have a pivot. So I take this active pivot. I'm going to go down because I have to go down to a new row without a pivot. And I want to go to the leftmost cell. So I'm going to, starting here, I'm going to go to the right. And I'm going to keep going to the right until either I find a non-zero term, but this is a zero, so that's no good. i got to check below it, but it's also a zero. All right, well, that's no good. So I have to keep going. And I stop when I find either a term that's not a zero 
or something below it is not a zero. In this case, both of those work out. So there's my next pivot. It's this two right here. And the reason why I have to do this is because we remember this next step, which says, use row operations to change the value inside the active pivot position to one. Okay, so that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and write out the next step. So I'm going to just keep everything else the same. 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0, negative 2, negative 2, all stay the same. But I need to change the inside of my pivot. So this pivot right here needs to become a 1. And that happens by dividing out the 2. And so this 2 also gets its 2 divided out, so that becomes a 1. Uh, this one's even easier to see with that linear system, though, right? Because all I'm really doing is I'm solving for that z in the second equation. So instead of a 2z, I divide out that 2 to get z is equal to 1. Okay, and then we're ready for the next step. Step 3 says... Add or subtract multiples of the active pivot row to zero out all cells above and below the new pivot position. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, the middle is going to definitely stay the same here. Also, don't have to worry about anything above and below these zeros. Those are going to stay exactly the same as well. It's the pivot column and everything to the right of it that can change here. So let's go ahead and write those. First of all, we'll write the originals. But I want to zero out above the pivot, pivot position. So I want to add 1 here. Well, that's easy, because I'm just literally taking that number and I'm adding it. So I'm going to take this 1 and add it up here as well. Now below, I had a negative 2. I need it to become a 0, though, so I've got to add a 2 to it. So I took this 1 and I added a 2. So this 1 gets multiplied by 2. And I'm going to add a 2 down here, and the original number was a negative 2 as well. So, what does that leave us with? Well, it's exact, I'm just simplifying here, but I'll just write the equivalent, which is also true. Uh, 1, negative 2, 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and 0 is what I get here. So let's go back to the linear system. What actually happened back here? Well, basically what happened is z is equal to 1. That's the same thing as 2z equals 2. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I can take the top equation, x minus 2y minus z is equal to negative 3, but I can add to it a z on the left and a 1 on the right, canceling those z's. With the last equation, negative 2z is equal to negative 2, I can add a 2z on the right, canceling that out, and a 2 on the right, which also cancels. So that boils down to the si simplified system. x minus 2y is equal to negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. The next equation is just z is equal to 1. And then finally down here, I get 0 is equal to 0. Now that is true. It's just not very interesting. I already know that 0 is equal to 0. That always happens. So I can just get rid of this equation at this point because it doesn't actually add any extra information. But notice that it does come from the fact that I have the 0 row in the augmented matrix. It just doesn't help me as far as the system of equations. 
All right, and we'll recircle the pivots, and then we'll go ahead and check if I need to repeat the process. And step four says, repeat until every row is a pivot row or is a zero row. And yeah, that's the case, isn't it? Every row either has a pivot, these two pivots here and here, or it's a zero row. And those are all zeros, so I am done. The other way you could check that you're done is just to go ahead and try and repeat, all right? If I was going to try to repeat, I would go down and right. But here I got a zero. Everything below it is a zero, so I have to keep going. But there's nowhere else to go to. So uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and call it quits there. Every row is a pivot row or a zero row. That means I can finish. I can conclude that this resulting matrix here is the row reduced echelon form of the matrix A.